Okay, the bridge is now on. While that's drying, I can start cleaning up these buttons, prepare them for the soundboard. I think that's it. Oh, we have... Where are they? Yeah, this bag. Here's some little pieces of soundboard that I can put back. There's spaces that are missing on the edges. Some of those can go back. I think that's it for now. So I'll clean these buttons up. I think they're all in good shape. That one's got a tiny chip in it. That could go back. That's okay. Sometimes these are all busted up. They all look good. A lot of buttons for a little piano. So I'll strip these, get get them to the bare wood, put some shellac on them, and oh, clean the screws too. It's rusty screws full of finish. We'll spin these on the drill press, put a nice design in them, and that will be it for the buttons. We spin these on the drill press quickly. come out looking much better. Might do a little more on this one. We have these ones. These you can compare. That looks much better on the bottom of the board. No one ever sees those, but it's nice to know they look like that. Here's the buttons. Getting a quick coat of shellac. Probably give them another coat in a few minutes. The first coat usually gets sucked up by the wood and they look kind of dry. Like those ones up there. They look pretty good. One more coat and they'll look a little shinier, fuller. But these look very good. The original buttons. Got the square ones too. Those look nice. I gave those some sanding. These will look very good on the soundboard. These go on last, after the soundboard has been finished. And you'll see that very soon. The board has been sanded thoroughly. Bottom half here. And here it's getting the first coat of shellac. It should suck up all this shellac into the wood. As you can see, make sure we get it in the corners. Nice even coat. This first coat is mainly to protect the wood from getting dirty when we handle it. This needs to go back in the case so we can figure out where the glue joint is on these edges and we tape off the glue joint so it doesn't get all full of finish. And the glue sticks good. It's looking good for a 1881 soundboard. You can see the crown in it a bit.
pretty wood. So we'll come back when this has been fully shellacked in a bit. Here is the bottom half of the soundboard again. It has two coats of shellac on it now. It looks really good. We're going to put it in the case now. Make sure it fits. Make sure none of these ribs are getting crushed. I think that one might have been squeezed a little bit on the side. Maybe that one. We'll make sure these fit good. And prepare to glue it into the case. Here's some leftover wood from our press, making our soundboard protectors so we don't dent the soundboard when we glue it into the case. This goes right over the rim. There we go. Cut that out. Still putting in these blocks here, and we ran into the music desk rail. Yeah, this thing's a pain in the neck. It's in the way because everything, you can't get behind here. And we usually take these off, but this one seems to have come loose. Hopefully it won't break. Sometimes they do, right there. But we make new ones at ease if we have to, but there we go. We'd rather not. There, out she comes. I mean, just a smidgen of glue holds these in when you put them back in. This looks like original. I don't know. But it can't be original. Maybe. Look at old hide glue in there. Usually when I put a pin block in, this is gone. This is our dry run. It looks good. Now we can take a pencil and mark where the glue joint is and tape it off so we don't get any finish on the glue joint. Very tight up against the rim. That's very good. Let's move over here. See in here. Looks good so far. Okay, I would call that perfect. Looks very good. So like I said, I'll take a pencil, mark where the glue joint is, and we can take this out. Mark where all the clamps go, so we can put them back on quickly. And this board should be pressed in very soon. Getting some French polishing now. First coat. We might put a second coat on later. 
looking very good. And again, this is the bottom. No one ever sees this. They had two finishes on shuttle boards. They had some material on the bottom. I don't know what it was. I suspect it was just plain old shellac. And the finish on the top was a sandrac resin varnish. That's what that's what I've come come to the conclusion <laughs> through all these years. Those materials are hard to get. Hard to get those varnishes today. I don't know where I would get them. shellac is too old. You cannot French polish with it. I've tried. It seems to be the, the pure, or I'll say the, the, the more processed the shellac is, the less shelf life it has. And if it gets too old, you cannot do this with it. I learned that the hard way. Nice flaxseed oil, it's edible and nutritious. Pure raw linseed oil. This is a favorite of all the old timers I've read. And I'll have to admit, it's just beautiful. I never, well I've tried other things. I tried olive oil one time, no good. Some people use uh, what about mineral oils, I guess. You could use that. At best luck with this. Amazing fat, plant fat. So it's a nice organic finish we got shellac from the bugs and we have uh, linseed oil from the plants out west here probably somewhere and it's very nice to work with. I like the smell too. It smells good. So this may be finished by tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. If it shrinks in too much we'll have to go over it again. Sprinkle here and there. This is important. See that little squiggle there? That's a little secret. Not anymore. But if you just keep your cloth straight like this, you're going to get streaks. But if you just zigzag and go like this, this. You throw off the pattern and they start to crisscross each other and they will flatten out. Depends how hard you press too. Press real hard to start, it squishes the juice out of your cloth. But then you ease up. Like right now I'm just letting the cloth glide over the surface. And again with a little crisscross here. Especially you do this zigzagging stuff. A little wiggle mostly to start because you're putting on a lot of material and if you don't do that you're going to get streaks and horrible looking lines all over the place that you have to sand out so this prevents a great deal of that see always break up your lines of transition maybe you can see that in the light from over here behind me I'm not so sure if you can see it there can you see it there um, the swirls and the... I can't see it. See right in here, you can see the swirling. Keep that straight. But if you if you go just back and forth only, you will have all kinds of horrible streaks in here. 
a little tricky to get used to wiggling your hand like this. But I've been doing it for well, since high school, so that's what, the, that's what my teacher said. The guy I learned this from was a Canadian. And he used to come to work with a white shirt and a bow tie. So it just goes to show you the discipline. He was a temper, temper not too. He'd get mad at everything. So he taught me good though. He was a hardhead. That's 50 years ago, I think. 40 some years ago. So almost done here. Got enough on for one day, or when did I start this? About an hour ago, maybe. Not even an hour. Forty-five minutes, maybe. Yeah, twenty after four, fifty minutes. Yeah. It's starting, to, starting to shrink now. It will dry up overnight, shrink a little bit. And tomorrow we can take a little steel wool, maybe, and go over some areas. Uh, and if it don't look right, we can put some more material on. Easily. Just tomorrow. Let this harden up overnight. If you go too fast, it shrinks. There. A little bit down here. Get it even. A little drop will do you. A little dab will do you. Grill cream commercials in the 60s. Probably the same stuff. Well, I said once before in one of the videos that shellac is one of the best moisture barriers in the organic finishing materials. Yes, shellac resin. It's, I guess it's even better than spar varnish. That's what I uh, that's what I read. It was in a woodworking magazine once. They had a test on different finishes to see which one had the best moisture barrier. And shellac was only second to paraffin. So it's pretty good. It's easy to deal with too. You know? if, you had to, if you had to start over again or for some reason do this back up a little bit, some alcohol will wash this off. Then you can start over without stripper or anything. Very, very nice that way. All right, see, we're getting enough on here. There comes a point when you get too much on. Well, if you get enough on there, it should stop for the duration of the curing time, which is overnight. So when you get to this point in time, you can really fill it. The surface gets a little tacky. It starts pulling the finish off your cloth faster and faster. And before the cloth gets too dry, you can really move, really put some stuff in here, right now. And it looks nice too. Everybody agrees. Something about the optical effects of this is amazing. Best. Well, they say that these organic finishes are light sensitive. Unlike, or, unlike uh, synthetic finishes, I guess. I can't think of a word. 
something about crystal crystal rotation of something about refraction of the light refraction through this organic material is uh, synthetics don't do that huh. there see that's starting to look nice now it's shrinking in and can smoothen that out here a little bit wipe some of the oil into your cloth have to get a new cloth once they get saturated like this they're no good start over with a nice new cloth there we go make sure you get the corners for the hardest there good enough for tonight Put the buttons on now tomorrow, Monday. I'll come in here and finish this up a little bit tomorrow. Needs a little more material over here, I can see. Right here. Starving. Here. Here. And here. This rag is just about through. For you have to wash it, put them in a the washing machine, and they come out good. Here's the buttons. Look, looking good. All these screws I cleaned up. These were all rusty. They had a bunch of crud in their slots. Nice and clean now. I spun them on the drill press. The camera will focus. They're nice and shiny now. It seems like the buttons might have shrank a little. They don't quite fit, so I think I have to drill out these holes with a slightly bigger drill. So the screws fit in. This one is kind of wedged in there. So I'll do that. I think the heads are still the right size. They're not all ovalized. Sometimes these get oval. These all look circular. And once I drill out these holes, we can scrape away a bit of finish on the soundboard and put a dab of glue under these buttons so they stick to the wood and screw them on. And that will be that. I drilled these buttons out. Screws fit nicely now. But the screw heads are a little proud. Just a wee bit. So we take this tool here with two hands. We take a little bit of wood off. And then the screw heads should fit perfectly in these buttons. And then they will be finally ready to go onto the soundboard. There's a good sized space here. It's not concerning at all, really. Usually these rims are real tight up against the wall of the case. That's okay. See, this piece had a shim there. That fit in there like that. Of course, the board isn't there. This has paint from when the previous restorers restored it. So I'm going to clean this all up, strip it, take the paint off, make it ready to go back on. So when the board is in, this can just be glued right back in. Back to the soundboard. I have the buttons on without any glue, just making sure they fit. This last one here, check this out, will fool everybody. You see our, we have two pieces of wood here. 
button goes there, you'll never be able to tell. Everyone will think that's one big board. We'll go, how do they do that? Whoa. The next step is the square buttons over here. We'll go like so. We need to pick out some dowels for these. It's kind of bad lighting, but the hole in the bridge is a little offset. We need to kind of ovalize these holes so the dowel sits in the bridge. This is going to be just a little off to the edge like that. It's going to look very good. Buttons look nice. Nice screws. Beautiful bottom half of the board. It's almost ready to go back in. A little touch up of the finish over there. We'll glue these buttons on next and buttons and that will be it